guys and welcome to a new episode of A Dark Soul. I'm Anita. I help you build a trusting relationship with your dark so you can conquer fear and reactivity with ease. And today we're gonna talk about muscles and why your dog should have one and why you should train it. So have fun! All right, so a muscle is something some people really see as a problem still and something that's very aversive towards a dog and something a dog cannot like because it's a metal thing in its face and it makes him look dangerous and all those stigmata that are just not really true but some of them actually help our dogs so here is what a muscle is for your dog it's a foreign object and of course if you just put it on and your dog has never seen something like that before it's very weird and your dog will probably not like it very much so of course with a muscle like with every other foreign object we want to put on our dogs like a harness or shoes when you live somewhere where winter is very cold or summer's very hot and you have to walk some pavement and stuff like that or whatever so whatever you want to put on your dog you have to introduce to your dog properly and you have to teach your dog how to wear it comfortably and of course for the dog to be able to wear it comfortably it has to fit your dog properly so you have to sorry guys my dog just stood on the table and it was very funny <laughs> okay um yeah you have to find something that's very good fitting and for a harness we all know that we know that a harness shouldn't slip to the side it shouldn't slip uh, to the front or back or it shouldn't put pressure somewhere on the dog it shouldn't hurt your dog of course and there should be enough space behind the elbows and the front ring or the Y should sit on a breastbone and not on a trachea so we all know these things and we know that we have to find a proper fit for our dogs where we don't know that sometimes it seems is with a muzzle because people just put muzzles on their dogs that are absolutely yeah unacceptable and the dog shows that of course those are dogs who constantly try to get the muscle off with their paws or rubbing against someone or rubbing against the floor and they cannot behave naturally with it on and stuff like that and yes of course there are dogs like my Sammy who are just hypersensitive and they cannot act naturally when they have a muscle on it's just not possible no matter how much you train because it is a foreign object and yeah and for sammy it took him about two years two three years to be comfortable in a y-shaped harness so yeah and harness is a little easier because it's not in the face so yeah but let's be honest there aren't so many hypersensitive dogs and most of the dogs who just aren't comfortable wearing a muzzle either haven't learned how to wear a muzzle or they have a muzzle that just doesn't fit and for a muzzle to fit properly it has to allow the dog not only to pant and 
drink and stuff like that but also to yawn so your dog should be able to open his mouth as much as he likes the muzzle should also not put pressure on the nose neither on top of the nose nor in front of the nose and the muzzle should not slip into the eyes of course so there should be a little space between the eyes and where the muzzle starts again it shouldn't rub somewhere so that the dog gets wounds from it that's of course true for a muzzle as well and it cannot be fully closed because the circulation of air would be restricted and for some dogs an additional strap on the forehead is necessary because otherwise the muscle just slips off it's especially for very short nose dogs and of course if you have a dog who would bite and you need the muzzle for bite prevention it can only be metal and there are some forms that can fit your dog and some forms that cannot fit your dog for example if a muzzle is deeper at the neck than at the front your dog cannot open his mouth fully it's just physics you can just try it out with your hand so a muzzle a well-fitting muzzle should be either box shaped or deeper at the front so your dog can just open his mouth and yawn or drink or whatever he wants to do and if you have a fitting muscle then of course you need to train your dog so your dog has to learn that putting his nose into the muzzle is something very very amazing and whenever he does that great things happen and if you do that small step but in a way that's fun for you and your dog it's not really a big deal it can be such a fun game and your dog can learn that for example whenever he puts his muzzle on you go outside and have fun or whenever he puts his muzzle on you do a little trick training or whatever if your dog can do a little search games with the muzzle on you can do that if you have a poison prevention thing you built into the muzzle so your dog cannot eat from the ground you can do anything else you can just um, let your dog for example find different smells and show you which one is the one you wanted and you reward him and stuff like that so you can do almost everything with a muzzle on and especially with trick training it's very important to exercise this with your dog because whenever you need a muzzle at the vet you will need the exercises again like for example sitting down standing up being held lying down lying on the side stuff like that or showing a cooperation signal whatever all those things have to be trained with a muscle on as well as without because your dog will make the connection only if you train it for your dog this is a totally new situation and your dog doesn't really know what you expect from him so everything you like your dog doing you can mark and reward or you can praise depending on how far you are in the training and there can always be a situation where you need your muscle for example we have here a situation where a muscle is mandatory in public transportation and taxis so for example if my dog needs to go to the vet and of course that's exactly the day where my car doesn't work then I have to bring him to the vet somehow else so I can use public tran transportation well I don't really have public transportation close to me but I could use a taxi 
in the taxi, my dog needs to be muzzled. And it's no option to just put the muzzle on then, because the dog will be uncomfortable. And this is something we want to prevent. Or whenever the dog needs to go to the vet and something really hurts, the friendliest dog can start biting out of fear or pain when it's bad enough. So no vet needs to get bitten. And there should always be bite prevention and stuff like that. And of course, there is another reason why a muzzle can help your dog, actually. And now we're back at our stigma tab because some people still connect a muzzled dog with danger. So whenever a dog is muzzled, that dog has to be dangerous and they will give you more space. Of course, that doesn't work with every dog. It's kind of dependent on breed and fluffiness. <laughs> like, Sammy is extremely fluffy and very, very cute, and people don't take him for full, even if he's growling and snapping at them. So, yeah, muzzle doesn't help really, but for every dog that's not like him, just a little bit taller, just a little bit darker, just a little less fluff. A muzzle usually helps a little bit with that. And in some situations where you really need a muzzle because your dog would try to bite people or other dogs or stuff like that, the muzzle can also give you a sense of security and freedom in training. Of course, we don't bring our dogs in situations they can't handle. But there is always a possibility for something to happen when we didn't expect it or where we didn't expect it. And if you know your dog would bite any other animal, a muzzle gives you a little bit more security and of course a sense of security that's very important and it just makes a nice feeling and it makes training a little bit more relaxed and you feel more free so there is nothing bad happening with a muzzle and especially for dogs who need it on a regular basis it has to fit awesomely and it has to be trained properly so of course if you need help with that I would be very glad to help you and see how we can get your dog to like his muzzle very, very fast. And yeah, if you have any questions, don't be shy. Write me an email. And if you like this episode, rate and review it. And I would love to read it from you. I wish you an amazing time with your dog. I wish you an amazing time with training a muzzle and we'll see each other next time. Bye.